Today you will learn everything about the best vector database that we have in N8N and that is this Postgres vector store right here. It has some unique properties that make it better than all of the other vector databases that you can find here in N8N. In this video I'm going to give you a one minute explanation of what a vector database is. I'm going to show you just how easy it is to use this Postgres vector store in N8N. Then we're going to talk about what Postgres is and why in my opinion it is the best long-term choice for all of your future automation projects. And then finally you're going to learn how you can set it up yourself in about 5 minutes. Okay, first of all, quick 60 second explanation what a vector database is for those who don't know it yet. When building AI automations, a lot of times we need to load additional data into the AI that it was not trained on. For example, this agent has to answer questions about dogs. And I have a list of questions and answers from a dog expert that I want the AI to look at when answering a new question. But this list is quite long, so I cannot put all of it into the prompt. This would completely overwhelm the AI. I only want to provide the three items from this list that are most relevant to a given new question. To do that, I load all of the doc expert answers into a vector database. This allows me to do a similarity search of all of these items based on meaning. So if I now ask a new question, for example, what food do puppies need? The vector database looks at the meaning of this question's text and returns results that have the same or a similar meaning. In our case, the vector database returned answers about what young dogs should eat because young dogs and puppies means basically the same. This lets the AI pull only the most relevant context for each question and that makes it smarter without overwhelming it. Okay, let's have a look how easy it is to use this Postgres vector store here in NADN. So you can see up here I've created an agent, this dog answer agent, where I use the vector store as a tool and all you need to do in preparation for that you need to load your data into the vector database. So you need to create a basic loading pipeline just like this. And in my case, what I load into the vector database are all of these questions and answers from the dog expert. So here you can see a long list of questions and answers. The way this loading pipeline is going to work, we can actually execute the first part here. This node here basically contains the questions now in your case, you might have a completely different data source, potentially an external data source or database where you get your information and data from that you want to load into the vector database. But here I've used this set node to store the data for demonstration purposes. Then you can see after the set node, I used the split out node to turn this array inside of this item here, the array of questions into 60 separate items. The reason I do that is so that I can loop over them individually in the next steps. And this is where the interesting part happens now. I loop over them and load them individually into the vector database. And the reason why this Postgres vector store makes this so easy is all I have to do here is I have to define a table name that is going to be our vector store. So let's call this maybe expert dog knowledge, something like that. And then I have to define what data I want to load into the vector store. In this case, I just combine the question and the answer into one text, put it into this data field and load it into the vector database. So this is basically what we're going to later run the similarity search and the similarity comparison based on. Now, before I execute this, I'm quickly going to uh, disable this delete old entry node. The idea with this is that we, when we load some new item into the vector database, the old version of it gets deleted, but in the beginning the vector database does not exist yet, so um, this would cause an error. That is why with the first run you always have to deactivate this. Let's quickly execute this. And now you can see the items are loaded individually into our Postgres vector database. And the amazing thing about this is that this N8N node now in the background will do all of the setup for us. So we don't have to do any setup outside of N8N. It will handle all of this for us. So it will create this table here if it does not exist yet. And it will also enable any type of extensions that are relevant for this functionality. So literally all you need to do is you need to decide on a table name and then start loading entries into it. All right, now it has completed and now I'm going to enable this delete old entry node so that when we now load additional data into this vector database that the old versions, if there are any duplicates, are deleted. All right, I'm going to choose the same table here, doc expert knowledge, and the rest I leave that as is. 
And now that's literally all we have to do as preparation to use the vector store as a tool for our AI agent and our AI automations. So right here, you can see I have this smart dog answer agent and it has the task to answer questions about dogs, nothing special. Here I've given it the tool, the dog expert Q&A database. This is our vector store, our Postgres vector store. And here I now have to fill out the same table name, expert dog knowledge, and I give it a description before answering a question, fetch similar questions and answers from world respected dog experts uh, from our dog expert Q&A database. And then I also connected it with an embeddings model. This embeddings model basically has the task to convert any given text into a vector, which is just a list of numbers that represents the meaning of a piece of text in a mathematical way. So you can compare it with the meaning of other pieces of text. All right, so let's give this a shot. I'm going to start the agent. I'm going to ask it, uh, what food should I feed to a puppy of a larger breed? And let's see what happens. So I execute this, the agent runs, and now it fetches information from our vector database. And in a minute, we should have the final results. Here we go, there we have our answer. Before we look at the answer, let's look at what information the agent fetched from the vector database. If I open this up, here we can see the response. Let's make this a little larger here. So it fetched four items in total because here I set a limit of four. The first item is, what is the danger of feeding young dogs large breed food meant for small breeds? Why do young dogs need higher protein than adult dogs? Then the third one, why should young dogs avoid exercising immediately after meals? And then the fourth one, what is the correct calcium to phosphorus ratio for growing dogs? So you can see all of the entries that it fetched from the vector database are super relevant to our question because they have a very similar meaning. And that is the powerful thing about vector databases because they allow us to do this similarity search based on meaning. And obviously, if I were to ask a completely different question, then this vector database would return some completely different entries, whatever is most relevant to that new question. And if we look at the response of this agent, we can also see this is a really good response. So here we can see feed a commercial large breed puppy formula, make sure to have the proper calcium to phosphorus balance, which is information from our vector database, avoid extra calcium or mineral supplements unless your vet says so, also from our vector database. So you can see it uses all of that information to generate a really good response and a really relevant answer. And all we had to do to enable this functionality is we loaded this information into the vector database and then made it available to our, our agent with this tool here. And the entire process was, in my opinion, only so easy because we used this Postgres vector store. We just defined a table name and started loading elements into it. If you now had a different automation and wanted to do this as well, you just copy this loading pipeline, you define a new table for this new automation that you want your vector store to be. And then you just create the tool and pull the information from that table. So it is super easy without a lot of annoying setup. And now I would like to talk a little bit about Postgres and why in my opinion, this is an amazing choice for your vector stores, for your AI agents and your automations. So first of all, what is Postgres? Postgres is an open source database. And at the moment it is one of the most popular databases in the world. And the amazing thing about Postgres is that it's a community project. So there's no company with a profit motive behind it. It is a general purpose database. So you can use it for all type of database operations, but it also has an extension called PG vector. And that allows it to be used as a vector database. And Postgres is an amazing choice for your automation technology stack for the coming years because Postgres is extremely stable. It is a very mature project, so there's not going to be any wild changes. As I just showed you, it is quite easy to set up. And also there is no lock-in effect because it is open source. You can easily switch providers if you don't like your existing provider anymore, or because it's open source, you can also self-host it, similar how you would do it with NADN. And what you also should not underestimate, Postgres obviously has this vector store functionality here, but there's lots of other useful applications for it with regards to data storage in NADN. For example, here with the AI agent, there is this memory and you can see you could use Postgres as a chat memory for your AI agent. 
Also, if I search for Postgres in the NAT and notes here, you can see there's also a general purpose Postgres node. If I open this up, you can see we have all types of different actions here. And these are basically the normal database operations. So you can also use the full power of Postgres uh, to use it as a normal database for all types of storage operations, because that is what it is initially built for. So you can see learning Postgres is a very valuable skill for your automation projects that goes far beyond just setting up this vector store functionality. All right, and now in the next five minutes, I would quickly like to show you how you can set up your own Postgres database instance yourself. Because all of the setup that I showed you so far was only so easy because before this video or in the past, I've already created my own Postgres database. And now we're going to do that together. So to set up your own Postgres database, click on any Postgres node in your automation. And then here where it says credential, click on create new credential. Here you now have to fill out a lot of different parameters. To create your own database instance of Postgres, what you can do is you can either self-host it, similar how you would do with NADN. However, that can be a bit technical and then you also have to manage it yourself. So for most people, I recommend to use Postgres through any of the available managed Postgres hosting services. In this video, we are going to use a platform called Neon. The website is neon.com. And the reason I use this for this tutorial today is because at the moment they have quite a good free plan that is actually really good and actually allows you to already go quite far. But the amazing thing about Postgres is it is open source, but there are also lots of other really good hosting providers that you could use. For example, one that I use in production is PlanetScale. The website is planetscale.com. And PlanetScale recently launched a new $5 per month Postgres database that you could also use for this. Additionally, there is Superbase. So probably you've already heard of that. Superbase under the hood also is a Postgres database that you can connect to directly from within NADN. There's also render.com. So you can see there are all these different hosting providers. And that's the amazing thing about Postgres. It is open source. So that means any company that wants to start their own hosting business can do it, which means you have lots of different available options. So if any of the providers suddenly starts to do some weird things like tripling their prices or something like that, then you can just switch to another one without having to completely rework your entire vector database setup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two links on the screen right now, and I will also put them in the video description. And these links will link to the top two recommended hosting providers that I personally recommend. The first one will always link to the top free one that I recommend. And the second one will always link to the top paid one that I recommend. And I will keep these links updated. So if you watch this video sometime in the future, then these links might point to a different provider that I consider the best one at that current point in time. Let's do the quick setup with Neon. So here I'm going to click on the free plan and click get started. And here you can now create your account. Once you've created your account and confirmed your email address, you will be redirected to this screen. There you have to give a name to your project. I'm going to call it Mike Test. For the Postgres version, just stick to whatever one is selected by default and the same for the rest of the settings here and click on create project. Now your database has been created and you can click on connect up here at the top. And then all of these parameters that we have to fill out in NADN are displayed here on the screen. If you use any of the other hosting providers that I showed you, a lot of times they don't show these parameters individually, but they only give you this connection string. This is not a problem in general because this connection string is basically just made up of all of these parameters here. It's just a combination of them. However, it can be a bit difficult to figure out which is which. So if you are using a provider that only allows this or only shows this connection string, then what you can do is you can just copy this and load it into ChatGPT or something and tell it to show you all of these parameters individually. Just make sure before you do that, like here, your password is, uh, is censored. All right, but here in this case, I can show parameters only, and then let's start to copy them over to NADN. I copy this host inside of here, then the database name, and I think the user was neondb underscore owner. Then I copy this password here. And finally, I set the SSL to require. The port, I leave that at the default here, which is 5432. Now again, with some of the other hosting providers, they might use a different port. 
with Neon in the parameters, you can see they don't show a port at all. That means they use the default Postgres port, which is 5432. But if in your connection string there is a port, just fill this out right here. Let's click on Save. And we get the confirmation connection tested successfully. All right, now we can close this. And let's test this out. I'm quickly going to disable this delete old version for the first run again. And let's load all of our lists into this new vector database. And now again, NNN will automatically in the background create the table for you that will be the vector store. And it will also enable any of the necessary extensions that are required for this functionality to work. All right, all of our 60 items have been loaded into the vector database. And let's actually have a quick look how that looks like in Neon. So here in Neon, I have the option to show all of the tables. And you can see it and in the background automatically created our expert doc knowledge database with all of our questions and answers. And also saved all of the embeddings, so the vectors that represent the meaning of this text. Don't forget, after you load your elements into the vector database for the first time, to activate this so that in the future, if there are any duplicates loaded into the vector database, they are removed here again. And obviously, if you now were to load additional questions and answers into here, then NNN would no longer create this table a second time, but instead it would just see, oh, this table with the name expert dog knowledge already exists and would append new entries to this existing table, to this existing vector store. And then you can use it again in your agents. You can go to your agent tool, to your vector store, select the correct credential here, and then enter the name of the table that is the vector store. And you can start to enhance your AI agents and AI automations with that. Now, what I will add to this, this uh, loading pipeline here is quite basic. It is uh, customized to this specific use case. These loading pipelines here, and also with the duplicate detection, this can be much more advanced and sophisticated. So if you're interested in a much more in-depth explanation how to set up these vector databases and how to build these RAG agents, then subscribe to this YouTube channel because this is going to be one of my next videos. Also, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like. And if you are interested in a video where I use vector databases to build a learning mechanism into my AI automations so they, that they get better and better over time, then check out this video that I will show here on the screen right now. Okay, thank you for tuning in. My name is Mike. Have a great day. Bye.